What's up cats and dogs, Mr. Cully here coming at you with another video and I am going to be talking about electron configuration again. But this time, instead of going over what they are, what are orbitals, what atoms actually look like, the quantum model and the uh, electron orbital diagram, I'm gonna show you a much faster way to go about this. So before when we use the electron orbital diagram, it was writing every single electron from bottom to top and then writing the electron configuration out. That's a tedious process, but it was a good one because it showed us, all right, electrons get allocated based on the lowest energy orbital, and then it works its way up to a higher energy orbital. That's very, very true, and that's why we visualized it in that way using those diagrams. But if we want to be efficient, if we want to get quicker at this, we can start to recognize patterns on the periodic table, and we can do shorthand methods as well. So that's what this talk is going to be about, and I want to open it up by looking at this picture right here. So this is the periodic table but it's not showing the elements, instead it's showing, okay, we're showing where the orbitals get filled on the periodic table. So we've got these purple uh, squares. These are uh, the S orbital, okay? These are the electrons in the S orbital. Here we got the D block, these are in the D orbital. We got the green block, these are your P orbital electrons, and we got the, the F block down here, which we don't use these guys a whole lot, but these would be where the F orbital electrons get filled. Notice that there's an exception over here. We got helium up in the very right-hand corner. That really should be in this spot, but obviously it's not there on the periodic table because uh, it's got a full shell, And but that's an exception, all right? So let's take a look at an example of this. If I were to use this chart to use, to, to fill out an electron configuration atom, what would I do? Well, let's start, with, uh, let's start with an example. Here we would have carbon. That's where carbon would be located if it showed all the elements. And I wanna write down the electron configuration for carbon. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill in the orbitals from left to right, top to bottom. Here's what I mean. So from left to right, starting at the top, it's my 1s orbital, okay? This row contains my 1s orbital. Well, I'm gonna fill both, okay? I'm gonna fill both. So I've got two in my 1s orbital. Why do I fill both? Because carbon's all the way down here. So I'm gonna fill out all my electrons for carbon that are to the left and, and above it, essentially. So, okay, I filled out my top row and I'm gonna fill out my bottom row. All right, so 2s, and it's gonna fill out these two. So 2s2, I've got two electrons in my s orbital at the second energy level. And now I'm on to my 2p, okay? I'm on, the, I'm on to my 2p, and we can see that it gets to the second square in 2p, all right? That means that I've got two electrons in the p orbital at the second energy level. So how would I write that? I would write it as 2p2. That's where carbon ends, is on the second electron of the p orbital at the second energy level. So what I just did was instead of doing the electron orbital diagram, I was able to figure out the electron configuration of carbon by looking at this chart. And uh, you're gonna get good at this to the point where you're gonna recognize, okay, well, if I just look at an, an element, I already know that it's in the P block and that would be the third row or the fourth row, something like that. You're gonna get better and better at memorizing this. So that is one way that you could do this is by using the chart. But let's look at a, let's look at a bigger element. Carbon is, is fairly simple. Let's look at uh, let's look at something in the 4P. Now I can't. I should have this memorized. I know. I know. Let's look at gallium. All right. Gallium would be right here. And I want to write the electron configuration for gallium. So I do the same method. I start in the first row at the top. Work my, le work my way left to right. Understand that I'm going to be filling every single electron of gallium with all these blocks that come before it. So that's why we're doing this. That's why we're starting at the top and working our way down. All right. I'm going to fill every electron all the way up until this block that I have right here. So it would be 1s2. I work my way down. 2s2. Work my way across. 2p1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 2p6. All right, work my way down. 3s2. All right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 3p6. All right, 4s2. And notice it jumps down to 3 again. It's like, why does it jump down to 3? Well, if you remember from the previous video, when we did the electron orbital diagrams, we noticed that 3d was actually above 4s. This is out of the scope of this course, but understand like the 3D orbital does have a higher energy level than the 4S orbital. So that D block, that red block gets shifted down uh, one energy level. So you'll notice that everything's kind of clean cut, except when it comes to, except when it comes to this D block. 
All right. So understand, you just have to memorize that, that when you start the D block, it's going to be one less energy level than you think it is. All right. So then we're going to have 3D. And remember, there's 10 electrons in the D orbital. So this would be 3D10. And then finally, where does gallium end? Well, it ends on the first block of the 4P row, or it's going to have one electron in the P orbital at the fourth energy level. So this would be 4P1. And I ran out of room there, but it's going to end on 4P1. So this would be the electron configuration for gallium, all right? So essentially what you just got to do is figure out, okay, what element are you talking about? What element do you want to find the electron configuration for? Look at this chart, figure out where it is located here, and then fill in accordingly from left to right, top to bottom until you hit it, and then boom. Its landing spot is going to be what you end with. So gallium ends on the first block of the 4P row, so it's going to be 4P1. I know it's going to go all the way up until 4P1. All right. So that's one way to do this. All right. Let's learn the shorthand method. So let's take a look at the element iron, for example. Iron would be right there. You can see it just kind of floated in. Boom. That's where it would be. All right. What we want to do, instead of writing the whole length of an electron configuration, because something can get pretty big and pretty long, we want to abbreviate it. We want to make it easier on us. So what we do when we have iron, you know, I'm just going to give the electron configuration for iron right now. If we were to do it normally, you would figure it out, okay? We know that iron is going to end on 3D, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's going to end on 3D, 6, and everything that comes before it will be included. So iron's electron configuration is going to be this. That is the long-gated uh, electron configuration for iron. If we want to shorten it, what we do is that we look at the previous noble gas, whatever noble gas comes before iron. Well, remember, our noble gases are in that final column, that final group. So we're looking at whatever noble gas comes before iron, the biggest one that we have that comes before iron. It would not be this guy. This comes after iron. So it's going to be the one above it, whatever this guy is. We want to look and we want to look at the periodic table and see, okay, what noble gas is that? Well, you look at the periodic table, you're going to find out that it's argon. All right. Notice, you might notice that if you look at electron configuration, it builds on itself. It just keeps building. It gets longer and longer and longer. Well, if you were to find the electron configuration for argon, it would be this, what I have in this bracket. It's going to end in 3P6. It's included in the electron configuration for iron. All those electrons that argon has, iron also has, and then some. So the way that we simplify this is we kind of substitute it out, much like we do in math when you want to substitute and make something simpler. That's what we're going to do here. And the way we do that is we cut out all of the electron configuration for that noble gas. So we're going to cut that out, and we're just going to put argon in brackets. So it looks like this. So instead of writing this all out, we write this, which symbolizes it's going to have the electron configuration for argon plus whatever comes after that. So we just wiped out the electron configuration for argon, and now the only thing I have to include is what comes after argon. So 4s2, 3d6. And that's where I stop. So we're essentially substituting out the electron configuration for the largest noble gas that we had before the element that we care about. All right, let's take a look at another example. Here is tin. Tin is SN and it's there on the periodic table. And we want to look at, okay, well, first of all, we can write down the, the original electron configuration. So if you go through you do this, you're going to find that it's pretty, pretty dang long. Okay. There it is. That's the original. That's the unabbreviated version. Now we want to look at what is the noble gas? What is the noble gas before 10? Well, look at a periodic table and you would see that it's krypton. Okay. Krypton fits right there. So what we do is we substitute out, we figure out, okay, where does krypton end? Krypton ends on 4P6. So we're going to substitute out, we're going to cut all of that out from the electron configuration of 10 and put krypton in brackets in its place. So now we have tin as bracket KR bracket 5S2, 4D10, 5P2. We essentially, we, we remove the electron configuration for the noble gas and then just add whatever comes after that. And it makes it so much more clean and simple. All right, let's do one more. Let's look at potassium. Potassium falls in there in the fourth period. And you write out the electron configuration for potassium. There it is. Ends in 4S1. The noble gas that comes before it is argon. So what we do is we remove everything 
Uh, from that electron configuration, that would be argon, and we substitute argon back in, and now it becomes really short. It's just argon in brackets and whatever comes after argon. Well, luckily for us, the element is the next one, so it's just the 4s1 orbital. So this is the abbreviated version of potassium. Makes it super, super simple. All right. Let's say and we can use that method. This is the third method. This is how I grew up learning it. This is the way I was taught. This is if you did not have a chart in front of you like we just had, or if you didn't have the orbital diagram, how could you tell the electron configuration of an element? All right, if you just had the periodic table. Well, remember, the first energy level only contains the S orbital. So that's why I just write one S there. Then I'm gonna move down a row, I'm gonna write this out. The second energy level contains the S and P orbitals, boom. There it is, 2s, 2p. The third energy level contains the s, p, and d orbitals. All right, fair enough. The fourth energy level contains the s, p, d, and f orbitals. All right, so does the fifth. And actually, so does the sixth and the seventh. They go all the way to, to f. We just don't include them because we're, ever, we're never going to use them because there's, uh, there's not elements big enough to, to fill those. We just know that these would normally be here as well. All right, if I wanted to know the order of filling these orbitals, what I could do is I could draw arrows through these diagonally, all right? If I draw these diagonal arrows through them, then what I get is this chart over here. And this is going to be the order of filling, all right? This is going to help me understand what's the order of what I fill first. So it's going to go 1s and then 2s, just for all the arrows, and then 2p, and then the 3s orbital, and then the 3p, and then the 4s. And then the 3D, and then the 4P, and then the 5S, and then the 4D, and then the 5P, and then the 6S, and then so on. Okay. So this is one way, like if you ever stuck and you, you remember what each orbital contains at what energy level, you can write this down, write your rows, draw your arrows, boom. Okay. That's how I memorized it. It's old school. But if you're ever stuck or you don't have a resource in front of you, there it is. All right. So let's give an example for iron. Iron had 26 electrons. All right. Well, I fill the, the 1s orbital first, and the s orbital can hold two, all right? Now the 2s orbital, and that can hold two. Now the 2p orbital, and that can hold six. So now I'm up to two, four, I'm up to 10 electrons. I need 16 more. And now I'm gonna fill the 3s orbital, and that can hold two. Now I'm gonna fill the 3p orbital, and that can hold six. So what am I up to now? Two, four, 10, uh, 12, 18. I need eight more. All right, so I'm on 3P, and now I go to 4S. 4S can hold two, and now I need six more, and I'm on the 3D. 3D can hold 10, and I need six more, so I'm not gonna fill it up all the way, so it'd be 3D6, all right? So I just found out the electron configuration only knowing the number of electrons in iron, and I didn't use a chart, and I didn't use the electron orbital diagram. All right, so you can use this method to figure out as well. But notice too, all of these exponents, I call them exponents because that's what they look like. All of these small numbers that go above the orbital represent what? They represent the number of electrons in that orbital. So if you add them all together, if you add all those exponent values together, they should equal however many electrons that you had in that element. All right, so keep that in mind. If you ever wanna check yourself, add up all those exponents together and say, does it add up to how many electrons I, I want? The answer should be yes, all right? And lastly, let's look at this. I it's, it's also fair game if I were to give you the electron configuration of an element and ask you, okay, what element is it based on its electron configuration? So one way you could do that is go back to here and we look at the periodic table. We use our block, our colored blocks. I give you 1s2, 2s1. Well, we know if it has 1s2, it's gonna fill this row. And it's going to stop on the first electron, the first block of the 2s uh, orbital. So it should be right here. Whatever this element is right here should be whatever this is. Because it stops, it's the first electron of the s orbital at the second energy level. Well, if you look at a periodic table, you're going to see that that is lithium. Lithium would go in that block. All right, fair enough. That was easy. Well, what about 1s2, 2s2, 2p1? All right, so I know it's going to fill the 1s's, it's going to fill the 2s's, and it's going to get into the first block of the p orbital of the second energy level. So it would be whatever this guy is, the first block of the 2p 
orbital. You look at a periodic table, you're going to see that that's boron. All right, fair enough. That's easy. Uh, this is a typo by me. That should say 2s2 in there. All right, so we got helium. This is the abbreviated version. Helium is right here. So I know that I'm working after this. So it's going to be 2s2. All right, it fills the 2s2. and ends on 2p6. All right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right, so it's going to be this last element. And that would be neon. And you're like, wait, Mr. Cully, neon's a noble gas. Can't I just put that in brackets and be done? If it's a noble gas, you can't use, um, you can't just put it in brackets and be done. You have to go back to the previous noble gas and do the same method as before. So kind of sucks, but it is what it is. But notice, the only thing that I really need to know if I'm using this method is whatever my electron configuration ends in. So I don't really care what all that is. I'm not going to go through and just kind of go through it. I'm just going to look at where does it end. So 3P3. Well, if I can memorize the pattern here, I know that my three P's are right here. 3P3, well, the third electron or the third box in the 3P row would be whatever element this is. And you would see that that's phosphorus. Boom, done. The next one, 3D7. All right, here's my 3D row. I count seven over, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's going to be whatever that element is, and that's cobalt. Just check your periodic table. And then lastly, 4D1, all right, well, it's going to be in the first block of the 4D row, which is hard to see the red on red, but that would be yttrium, which I think is just Y. Yeah, that's yttrium. Why is it called yttrium? I think there's a place called yttria or I don't know. Look it up. But uh, that, is, that is a super easy way to do it. Instead of going through counting all the electrons, trying to figure it out, you can memorize the patterns here on this chart and be like, okay, well, I can visually represent, I know where each of the orbitals are. And this is fair game. If you want to write this on your periodic table for class, go ahead. Say that these, this is the S block. These are the D blocks. This is the P block. This is the F block. That's fine. You just need to know how to interpret the electron configurations that I give you to find an answer. All right. So that was, uh, that was the lesson on kind of speeding up the process of electron configuration and, uh,